In 1987, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles showed up on the North American scene with a cartoon about their adventures in the sewers beneath New York City. I was just 12 years old at the time and enjoyed the program quite a bit. While on the surface the idea of Ninja Turtles sounded pretty silly, the personalities of the team and their far out enemies made it something special. What I didn't know at the time was is that the cartoon was actually based on a much darker comic book that had begun all the way back in 1984. As the property grew and branched out into other areas, we got some action figures that added to the appeal. By 1989, the Turtles were on fire. The TV show was a hit, the toys were selling like wildfire, and there was even talk of a live-action film coming up. With all that success, it was only a matter of time before someone in the video game industry decided to get involved with it. That someone was Konami, who released both an NES console version as well as an arcade game in 1989. And that's our topic for today. We are going to go over some of the Ninja Turtle games that appeared in the late 80s and early 90s. There was a stretch of time when these games were incredible and among the better licensed titles you could play. I hope you guys enjoy 5 years with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. My first time with a Turtles game came on the NES. It was published under the Ultra label, but it was just Konami using a different name to circumvent Nintendo's idiotic licensing rules at the time. This was based on the cartoon and a single-player side-scrolling adventure. There was also overhead areas where you had to find the entrances to the levels you needed to defeat. The setup was actually rather well done. You could switch to any turtle you needed, each with their own weapons to take advantage of the various situations. Missions were what you expected them to be. Rescue April, stop bombs from blowing up, and of course find and defeat the Shredder. The graphics and sound were fantastic for an NES title, and my friends and I played it quite a bit. The only thing that held it back was its grueling difficulty. Even with repeated plays and knowing where to go, this was a really hard experience. Death comes frequent and there were loads of enemies and environmental dangers in every single stage. It just never let up. Worse, I had a good friend that was really good at it, so while I was struggling and getting frustrated, this dude was crushing it and beat it long before I even got close. Still, it was a solid overall game and I enjoyed playing it. I just wish the difficulty had a better pace to it. Konami made sure arcade goers had a turtle experience as well. Released in 1989, this was much more my kind of game. It was a side-scrolling beat-em-up and honestly, much more closely related to the kind of fighting I expected in a game about Ninja Turtles. No exploration here, this was a good old-fashioned ass-kicking and I enjoyed it start to finish. Best part was is that it supported up to four simultaneous players, so you could bring your entire group of friends along for the adventure. Series staples showed up like Crane, Bebop, and Rocksteady, and of course you had to rescue April and Splinter. The graphics and animation were incredible at the time, and one of the better looking arcade games at its release, especially considering it was four players. It really captured the look and feel of the cartoon, and the music was simply incredible. While I had played the original NES game first, this was a better experience top to bottom. So much so, Konami realized pretty quickly that it needed a home version of it to capitalize on its success. As 1990 began, Konami took stock of all the success they were having with the Turtles franchise. Their first NES game sold millions of units, and the arcade game was popular and well received. Not one to let their better games go without an NES port, they decided to bring home the first arcade game to Nintendo's 8-Bit Monster. Since there had already been a game in the series for the NES, Konami called this port Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 the arcade game, and it was a surprisingly solid conversion. 
The gameplay was fun, and although the visuals and sound had to be cut back incredibly, it still distinctly looked and felt like it should. The four-player co-op had to be cut down to just two, but that didn't hurt anything really. It was insanely popular and sold well, continuing the trend of success for Konami. I enjoyed this one myself, despite my arcade snobbery. I mean, you grab a friend and there were few home games in 1990 that were as fun and as easy to pick up and play. My little sister loved it so much, it's one of the very first games I remember her bringing me and asking me to play it with her. Games like this are intricately tied to who we are and the people we were around back then, and it likely has powerful memories for many of you as well. Konami was having such great success with their Turtles games, it was a foregone conclusion that it would eventually show up for the Game Boy. It did just that in 1990 with Fall of the Foot Clan. This takes the form of a side-scrolling action title that was quite a bit different from the NES and arcade games before it. I love the presentation. The music, the large sprites, it really did look great on the Game Boy's tiny screen. It even managed to have some nice effects in the foregrounds and backgrounds at times. It was short and it was easy, but I still really enjoyed the gameplay. It was perfect to play in the car or while you were waiting for your mom to finish shopping. If I had to level a criticism at it, it would be the repetition in the enemies. You roughly fight the same three or four guys for the entire game with only the boss encounters offering any real variety. That was okay though. Game Boy games could get away with this because they offered the console experience on the go, and that was a damn sight better than the garbage Tiger Electronics was peddling to kids. Nineteen ninety had been another great year for Konami and the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle brand. Sales were great, the property was as popular as ever, and it was now nineteen ninety one, and the world was ready for more ninja action. That came in March with the release of the Turtles in Time arcade game. Take everything about the first arcade game we went over, and this basically improves it all on an already stellar design. Four player co op is back, the graphics are better. The animation, the special effects, the music, the gameplay, I mean Konami took the beat em up formula and touched it up to near perfection here. It was so immensely playable, it appealed to anyone that enjoyed video games. Heck, it could even draw in those that didn't play video games at all. I could get my girlfriend at the time to play it, and she had about as much interest in video games as she did in watching paint dry. It just had a charm and playability that instantly grabbed you. It was also a rare arcade experience that was actually well balanced as far as difficulty. While you certainly could get your ass handed to you at various points, a typical credit saw you playing a while before you were defeated. This is an absolute classic and the kind of game you just never forget. Pizza time! Konami kept the Game Boy love going in 1991 as well with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 Back from the Sewers, another side-scrolling action game that didn't depart much from the first one. It plays very similar and while it's not bad, I really dislike the look of the sprites and animation here. Everything is so awkward from the way you walk to all of your attacks. Don't get me wrong, it was still worlds better than the crapalicious offerings elsewhere, but I just didn't appreciate this one as much as I could have had it looked better. Otherwise, the stage design is solid and it plays well, so I definitely recommend giving it a try. It has sections that put you in mind of the arcade game, so there is definitely some variety here worth noting. Again, the killer music makes everything better.
with the first two Turtles games selling so well on the NES, Konami just had to do another one. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3 The Manhattan Project was a new and exciting entry into the series that wasn't directly based on anything before it. It does take some gameplay inspiration from the arcade game, but here you get new stages, a new story, and each turtle has a new throw attack. Two-player co-op returns, as does the solid audio and visual presentation. I actually wouldn't play this one until a while after its release because I had moved on to other platforms. In that context, you could say it had aged a bit against the better-looking Turtles games released around the same time. But don't shortchange this, it was still a heck of a lot of fun. Lots of neat special effects, classic boss fights, and of course the characters you know and love. If you enjoyed the NES port of the arcade game, this will give you a very similar level of quality. It's often overshadowed by the 16-bit games of the time, but still a great one nonetheless. Nineteen ninety two was arguably the best year for Turtles video games. That summer we got a port of Turtles in Time for the Super Nintendo, and it was more than we could have hoped for. To keep things in line with the three previous NES releases, this was given the four number in its title. It was also changed in numerous areas from the arcade original. It's missing some animation, some voice samples, and the four player co op, but also received additional content and some changes to the enemies and stage design. None of that means a thing because this was ultimately an incredible game start to finish. While most arcade ports had to be butchered at the time, this was excellent in all areas. Cool special effects like tossing enemies at the screen highlight graphics that were detailed and animated quite well. Music is important to a Turtles game and it does not disappoint here. It's the kind of tunes you can close your eyes to and let the beautiful waves of nostalgia wash over you. Konami even added some extra features like a time attack and versus battle options to help extend the replay value. It had taken Konami three years to do it, but we finally had a home version of the Turtles that was every bit as good as the arcade had offered. Beat em ups were a dime a dozen in the 16 bit days, but rarely did they reach these heights. Later in 1992, Konami even blessed the Genesis with a Turtles game called the Hyperstone Heist. Working off of the many assets used in Turtles in Time, this mixed up the story, stages, and enemies into a brand new game. There are many folks out there that will tell you this wasn't as good as Turtles in Time, but I ain't one of them. This was just as good and every bit as playable as its Super Nintendo counterpart. It offers up excellent music, two-player co-op, and hits all the high notes that had made the arcade versions a blast. The impact of every hit was as satisfying here as it was anywhere else, and I dare say the gameplay was a bit faster. It did the hardware justice and I consider it an absolute must-own. My lone complaint about it is, is that it could have used an extra stage or two and Konami used a cheap tactic of having to fight the bosses again. Otherwise, this is a winner and very much worth your time. Nineteen ninety three has my favorite Game Boy entry called Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles three Radical Rescue. This followed the previous two games as a side scrolling action title, but is very different in execution. You start out having to rescue the other turtles, who each have their own powers that allow you to get to new sections of the game. The closest Sega title I can equate this to is the Game Gear Shinobi titles, which were very similar in design. It also looks quite a bit better than the previous Game Boy release, losing that funky walk and attack animation. Some didn't care for this, but I found it quite playable and one of the platform's better titles that year. Like the other Game Boy entries, it's only one player and can be extremely tough, 
but still well worth a look. Be sure to get those passwords to help you keep your place in the game. If you still haul around a portable, you can do a lot worse than this one. Our last game is the Konami Classic Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Tournament Fighters. This was released on the Super Nintendo Genesis and NES, and all three games were radically different from one another. The Super Nintendo version is without question the best of the bunch. Gameplay, sound, and visuals are all quite solid for a non-Street Fighter 2 title. It's tailored well to the Super Nintendo controller with two punches and two kick buttons, as well as a meter for your super attacks. The storyline is on par with the source material as well. You must of course rescue April and Splinter and should you not want to mess around with that, you can always go straight to the versus options. It isn't going to replace Street Fighter 2 in my opinion, but it can still be fun with a friend. The poor Genesis version was an entirely different beast. While they got a pretty good AV presentation here, they pretty much broke everything else. The cast of fighters suck, the three button interface sucks, and the AI is just about as cheap as any fighting game I've ever played. I mean April O'Neil is freaking fighting aliens and cloned turtles in this. But it's the gameplay that just isn't worth your time. It never feels like a cohesive fighter. While I don't consider the Super Nintendo version anywhere near as good as Street Fighter 2, it's magnitudes better than this train wreck. It really is a shame. Konami had an engine that looked and sounded the part, but they just couldn't make it play on the same level. The NES game came last and again Konami went in a completely different direction. One-on-one -on -one fighters were not a regular thing on the old NES, so this one stands out a bit more. You must battle the other turtles to see who is the best warrior and capable of defeating the Shredder. Visually, it's actually a solid game considering the age of the hardware, and it sounds pretty damn good too. While you'd think the gameplay would be beyond simple, it actually has a fair number of special moves and the animation blows away most games on the platform. There's even some nice layering in some of the backgrounds. It's got its problems, but considering how bad I was expecting it to be, I'd say it's a miracle it's as playable as it is. For about five years there, Konami just lavished us with some great games in the Turtles universe. There are over a dozen games here and almost every one of them are worth playing today. The thing is, we went over games I personally played, but there are many more I didn't know about. There were ports and original games across micro PCs like the C64 and Amiga. There were a bunch of handheld units and even a PC exclusive release. It really didn't matter what you played, the Turtles were almost everywhere. Once the 32-bit generation begun, they slipped quietly into obscurity until 2003, when a new series of games began. Konami picked up the torch and these games were halfway decent as well. 
I'll always fondly remember that stretch back in the late 80s and early 90s the most, however. These games were so fun, and right alongside the toys, cartoon, and movies, made being a Turtle fan something special. This was also at a time when Konami were at the top of their game. Rarely did they release a truly bad title, and you could always count on their wares looking and sounding up there with the best. As a Sega fan, I was grateful we received some of that magic, and I still play the Hyperstone Heist quite often. If there are games in this episode you haven't tried, please do. I'm confident you'll come away seeing just why they are so fondly remembered. I'm Sega Lord X. Thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you next time.